it's the Heidelberg Castle. And we're gonna go up there now, and the way we do it is uh, back to the corn market, and the funicular leaves from the back side of the corn market. So there's the cable car. That, that's going to take us up top onto the castle. Of course, you could walk up the hill, but you don't want to do that. It's too far, you don't have enough time, and it would burn up your energy. So ride the funicular. It's very convenient, not expensive, and it brings you up to this all-important visit while you're in Heidelberg. You must come and visit the great Heidelberg Castle. From up here on the Castle Terrace, you get a fantastic view of the town. It's one of the most beautiful views in the world, looking down at Old Heidelberg, and you can see the old bridge across the Necker River. Unfortunately, a lot of people who come to Heidelberg on a bus tour of Europe only get to see this view of the city and a quick look in the castle, and then they get back on the bus and leave town. They don't get to experience the city itself. They're missing out. So you can see how steep the cliffs are the castle's built on. With that view looking down on the town. And from that side terrace with the view, we walk over to the main entryway, the front gate of the castle. We're in the courtyard. As you can tell, all around us are the various stages of the castle. Some are well preserved and some are hardly preserved at all. The wall behind me is just a facade. You see, and the building itself is all blown out. And this is the result of the various battles, primarily. Some of the buildings were ruined in the thunder and lightning storms. They must have been tremendous lightning attacks, uh, knocked down some of the walls. But most of the damage is from the battles, particularly in the late 1680s, when Louis XIV's armies were attacking this area. The main building that you're looking at is the Heinrich Building. And it was built in the early 1600s. 1607 is when the construction began. And it survived all of these bombardments somehow. And beautifully preserved, what you see is a wall filled with niches and statues of the different protectors of Heidelberg in the area. The different generals, the different rulers of this part of the country, part of Bavaria. But just look around at the fountains and Behind us, we have a bit of a loggia. Look at this corner, the way it's hollowed out and a nice open area with the columns and the arches. Uh, there's a couple of things that we can go inside to look at here. Uh, there's the largest wine barrel ever made. It holds 200,000 liters of wine. And they used it because they used to party up here in this castle. They say an average consumption was 2,000 liters a day. A liter is more than a quart, you know, it's more than a bottle. And the total cellars, including the barrel, held 700,000 liters of wine. That would last you for quite a while. And we'll actually go right in that door over there and you'll see the wine barrel. It took 120 big oak trees to build the barrel. And there's a little wine tasting room if anybody wants to sample some of their white wines, it's available. <laughs> And you get to keep the engraved glass as a souvenir. Bottoms up. Red wine, ice wine, white wine. Of course, Germany is more famous for their beer than their wine, but Germans today actually drink more wine than beer. And their wine production has turned around and they've gotten away from just making sweet white wine and more into the dry reds. Here's the wine barrel, it's so huge. There's a staircase that goes up one side and a platform on the top, and then you come down the other side. Remarkable experience in the wine cellars there. Don't miss out on that. And there's also a nice wine restaurant on the grounds of the castle that's open in the evenings. And something else to see is the pharmacy museum. And that's quite nice, uh, you'll see uh, the old apothecary shop and some of the artifacts that went with it. And so those are all open to us. So you can see that this Heidelberg Castle is one of the world's great fortresses. It's a must-see in Heidelberg. Through the gateway, this is how they kept the bad guys out. Drop those gates down the portcullis and keep everybody out.
and it's a very impressive guard tower. And once you've seen the castle, then we gotta go look at the gardens, which are out the door and to the left. Beautiful garden. It's great for walking and meditating and enjoying nature. You can pose for a shot in front of this statue fountain of a river god. Perfect day for the castle. Here we are in early September, mid-September. Perfect temperature. But we're the lucky ones because in another two weeks, their summer is going to be over and it's going to get cold and rainy again. And we'll be home in Hawaii. <laughs> the endless summer. These castle gardens were first laid out in the early 1600s and they were very popular and then they fell into disrepair. There's a dry moat that runs around the castle that you can see from the observation wall. And the gardens have been rebuilt in different styles and now they're in the style of an English country garden. The fortified bridge and tower gate lead us back outside of the castle. Now we finish the Heidelberg Castle and get back on the funicular. Take us back into the town. Only takes about three minutes to ride down the hill in the funicular. Very easy. Better than walking. And here's a tip when you're riding up the funicular to the castle. Don't go to the end of the line because that's too far. You'll have to walk back down again towards the castle. So just get off at the castle stop. Now we're back in the heart of the old town and we are going to spend a few minutes with you here walking around and showing you some of these very pleasant little side streets and alleyways. There's restaurants and shops everywhere, of course, and this grand old style of architecture. Most of these buildings date to the early 1700s, reconstructed after the wars with France. So we'll spend a few minutes walking listening to the sounds of the city. Let's listen to this young lady performing her heart out for the pedestrians walking by on the main street of town. Those are some nice artistic moments, enjoying the music and watching the artist painting in his outdoor studio, which just happens to be the main pedestrian street of town. There's a loyal fellow waiting for his master, perhaps finishing a meal or running some errands. Well, now we're taking you on some further strolls in the little back alleys of Heidelberg. This is a university town and many of the students live in this quiet residential section and yet we're just two blocks away from the main square of town. Nice and quiet here and two blocks over you've got more of the restaurants and the bars, the outdoor life of the city. You have a mix of tourists and local residents enjoying their time in these cafes. But we're taking you through the cycle of the day we started out in the morning and through the day with our activities and now into the evening it's the cocktail hour so let's stroll along and check out the action people kick back enjoying some beer some beverages of different kinds conversation with their friends just sitting back and enjoying life outdoors on the sidewalks of heidelberg it's a nice environment when you're here in the spring and the summer and the fall. Of course, in the winter it would be quite cold, a different scene altogether. Some of the bars have ethnic specialties, the Spanish-style tapa bar there. So we're out for a little stroll this evening to check out the restaurant scene. This is the uh, main square of the old town. 
Twilight is a magical time to be out for a stroll. The lighting is wonderful, the temperature is pleasant. We generally visit here in September, which is a nice time to go. Twilight extends till about 7 p.m. and then it's time for dinner. And dark beer to wash it down. You can have some excellent German food here, of course, or they've got Italian, they have French, they've got pizza you can eat casually or in a more elegant setting. The Weisserbach restaurant is one of our favorites. They have got some excellent dishes. We'll take you back here a couple of times during the program, night and day, to point this place out. It's just a few blocks off of the main square. Excellent food and very good service.